as of the 20th of November, the Orbital Club of U.S. Space Companies consists of only three members. However, a few days ago, they just inducted their newest member. Let's find out who that member is in today's episode of Great SpaceX. On the 21st, Elon Musk congratulated Astra Space, a small launch vehicle startup in 2016, for successfully reaching orbit for the first time. Astra Space's Rocket 3.3 successfully achieved this milestone on a November 20th launch. The Rocket 3.3 vehicle with the serial number LV0007 lifted off at 1.16 a.m. Eastern from Pacific Spaceport Complex, Alaska on Kodiak Island. They had actually scrubbed a launch attempt the previous day after more than two hours of delays. The launch carried a payload for the space test program called STP-27AD2 through a contract arranged by the U.S. Space Force through the Defense Innovation Unit. The payload, designed to measure environmental conditions on the vehicle in flight, intentionally did not separate from the upper stage. The flight went as planned, with the first stage firing for about three minutes. The upper stage then separated and fired its single engine for approximately five and a half minutes, injecting the stage into an orbit nearly 500 kilometers high. During a webcast of the launch, Astra's Director of Product Management, Carolina Grossman, expressed that they are absolutely bursting with pride at LV-0007, lucky number seven. And this represents a huge, huge step in our mission to improve life on Earth from space. This was the fourth attempt by Astra to reach orbit. The previous attempt on August 28th failed when one of the five first stage engines shut down within a second of liftoff. The company blamed the failure on a quick disconnect system for propellant lines that leaked fuel, which ignited in an enclosed space between the rocket and launch platform, severing the connection to electronics controlling the fuel pump for that engine. Two other launch attempts last year also failed to reach orbit. The second of those in December of 2020 nearly reached orbit. The upper stage ran out of fuel seconds before its plant shut down, leaving it about 0.5 kilometers per second short of orbital velocity. All four of the orbital attempts to date have occurred from the Pacific Spaceport Complex, though Astra aims to launch from a variety of locations around the world eventually. Chris Kemp, chief executive and co-founder of Astra, said that the team has worked hard on this for so many years, seeing iteration after iteration, failure after failure, lead to success. The road to success is often paved with failures, indeed. With this great achievement, Astra officially joined the Orbiter Club along with SpaceX, Rocket Lab, and Virgin Orbit. These are all US companies that have already launched into orbit on a privately funded rocket. And as you can see, including Astra, only four private companies have reached this milestone so far. It goes to show that reaching orbit is really not easy at all. Astra's CEO Chris Kemp himself admitted that this is an incredibly hard thing to do. Besides, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk also mentioned this in his recent congratulatory tweet to the startup company. But getting to orbit is something to be extremely proud of for any space company. But it's also one of the difficulties they must overcome before proceeding to explore deep space, the moon, Mars, and beyond. A typical example that can be mentioned here is Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin. Blue Origin is a private spaceflight company based in Kent, Washington, that is working hard to send tourists to space on its reusable suborbital rocket called New Shepard. The company was created back in 2000 by Jeff Bezos, the founder and CEO of Amazon.com. Bezos dreams of space colonies holding a million people sustained by the sun and the resources of the moon. However, before even trying to attempt floating colonies, Blue Origin still needs to overcome the hurdle of actually getting into orbit first. Different versions of the New Shepard have flown over a dozen times, but it doesn't enter orbit. It flies past the Kármán line, the internationally recognized boundary of space, and then it comes back down. Meanwhile, SpaceX, its one-on-one -on -one rival, first went into orbit in 2008. Instead of going up and down like New Shepard, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launched at a high enough speed to send it around the planet. Blue Origin still hasn't done the same 13 years later. 
Though it has yet to reach orbit and has fallen well behind SpaceX, Blue Origin in recent years has stepped up its competitive footing in the space industry. Now, they put all their hope in New Glenn, a powerful rocket. It's designed as a massive, partially reusable heavy lift vehicle capable of launching anything from national security payloads to commercial satellites. The rocket is expected as a more incremental step for the launch company that has yet to put a gram of material into orbit. Its first flight was previously slated for some time in 2021. However, Jeff's dream of an orbital launch will be put on hold as Blue Origin delays New Glenn's debut to late 2022. The delay has cost them many opportunities, and if this situation continues, then maybe Jeff's ambition will end up being just wishful thinking. Even a startup like Astra has humiliated both Blue Origin and Jeff Bezos. Because, as Elon Musk said, Blue Origin's rate of progress is too slow and the amount of years Bezos has left is not enough. So, what are the reasons for Blue Origin's delays in development? Its motto, Gratidum Ferociter, which is Latin for step-by-step -step ferociously. However, perhaps falling behind for so long made Jeff break his own rule. Instead of crawl, walk, run, Bezos asked his engineering team to begin sprinting toward the launch pad. The engineering challenges of building such a large rocket are big enough, but because New Glenn is so expensive to build, the company needs to recover it from the outset. Blue Origin engineers will be expected to bring New Glenn back safely on its very first mission. The decision to skip the walk part of the company's development has cost Blue Origin dearly. The company's engineering teams, composed of smart and talented people, are struggling with mighty technical challenges. Not only that, the work culture is a factor that greatly affects progress. The slow working style of the leaders make Blue Origin become more like a traditional aerospace company than a nimble new space startup. And to be honest, it's been, what, almost 21 years now. I don't think there's anything nimble or new about Blue Origin. Sorry, but that's just what I think. And to speed things up, leaders even make decisions they know are impossible. Furthermore, many dark sides in the working environment at Blue Origin were also exposed when the company got involved in scandals about toxic culture and safety issues which resulted in a mess. Given the situation, it's almost certain that New Glenn won't be able to launch on time. Perhaps it'll be decades from now before Jeff Bezos can even match the likes of Astra Space, let alone Elon Musk. Anyway, good luck, Jeff. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing and would like to continue supporting us in a huge way, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Another way you can show us how much you love us is by giving us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribing if you haven't already, and hitting the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. Be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.